Welcome to part three of organizing and prioritizing your studies. This third and final section will basically be answering the question how to study or how to study most effectively. So when do you think is the best time to study? Most people would suggest that you study early, sometime in the morning and afternoon, perhaps between classes when you have time. And the reason is, is you wouldn't want to study late at night when you are more likely to be tired and less likely to learn the material. So then the next question would be, where should you study? Well, that could vary, but one thing you definitely want to consider is studying in isolation. You don't have to study in isolation all the time because sometimes there could be uh, study groups that could be very beneficial um, and other group study activities. But a lot of times, at least most of the time, you're probably going to study in isolation so that way you're not distracted by other people and you can focus on learning the course material. Now, how long do you think you should study for at any given time? The best answer is no more than 50 minutes stretch of studying. Now, why is that? We're going to click on this link and I'm going to show you this nice chart. This is a great open access textbook. Um, and here we have this nice chart that talks about the effects of massed versus distributed a practice on learning. So MAST means this big session here, whereas these are more distributed. So you'll notice here we have three different students. We have Leslie who studies for a half hour, Leanne that studies for one hour, and Nora who studies for four hours. And we also have their grades here. So who has the highest grade? Leslie. And that's because she's breaking up the tasks of studying into smaller tasks. Now B is still a pretty good grade, so that's why we say no more than 50 minutes on our slide, uh, but you may uh, want to consider uh, studying for smaller amounts of time and then taking a break. And some of that may be, as I have heard, that we tend to remember the first and the last thing. So Leslie has more first and last to remember than uh, Leanne and Nora does. So therefore she learns more of the material and is able to get a higher grade. So if once you study for 50 minutes, then you should take a break. So how long should your breaks be? Usually five or 10 minutes is, is good. Of course, if you have other things that are scheduled on your calendar and task list, uh, you may end up doing it, uh, having a longer break sometimes. So what should you do when you study? Well, the big thing is, is you should pre-plan what you will do during study time. And usually when we're talking about study time, we're including reading course assignments, completing assignments, as well as doing review for quizzes and exams, and practicing recalling and retrieving information uh, from your own memory. And we're going to look at another chart to help understand why the studying and review is important. Let me find the right one. And for some reason, it's not showing up. So we won't be able to use this one. Let me bring another one up. Let me just go to Google and bring up another. Oh, I didn't want the calendar. No, uh, so here's here's another one that illustrates the same purposes I wanted to show you. But once you learn something, you almost immediately starting you start to forget what you learned. Right? So if you're learning reading chapter one and four weeks later you have to take an exam, oh boy, you're not gonna remember much of it. But if you review then you're going to remember more of it and forget less of it. So each one of these different colors is a review session. Oops is a review session. So you see if you review, then you have forgotten less. You review again, you've forgotten even less. And you review more, now you're going to retain more of the information. So that's why review is important because you need to battle this forgetting curve that just naturally occurs in humans. And you do that by studying and reviewing the course material so you're forgetting less of it. And you'll have more uh, learned so you're ready to do that on the quiz or exam.
Some more study tips. Uh, these come from How to Win at College, Surprising Secrets for Success from the Country's Top Students by Cal Newport, which is available in the library with another book of his as well. And what Cal Newport did is he went to Harvard and he uh, interviewed lots of students uh, good students who were getting good grades, who were successful, to figure out what were they doing so he could then do it himself and be a successful student. So he had found that students have a plan, which is what we uh, just talked about on the last slide as well. But those students plan out what, how, and how long, you know, those chunks of time that they're going to study before they take a break. He also finds that successful students would schedule free time and friend time, but they would not do it in between classes. And that's because they didn't want to get distracted. They would use that time in between classes to review work from class, because you can see if you review something immediately after class, you're going to remember more of it than uh, if you waited to review. So they're starting that review process early. And again, they start studying weeks in advance. They don't wait until the night. Uh, before an exam to then study all the course material. They, they do it in chunks throughout the semester. Another thing students did is they find productive study spaces. So study spaces where they could study um, and learn and get assignments done. And they would usually study alone. And many of them would have secret study spaces because they didn't want friends to find them because they know it's easy for a friend to come along and say, hey, let's go grab a coffee. And usually that sounds like more fun than studying in some cases. And they didn't want to be enticed. So they had secret spaces that they wouldn't even tell their best friend about just so they can get their studying done. Another thing that successful students did is they did coursework every day of the week. So remember earlier, we looked at that block schedule and we had nothing blocked out for study time on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. So a successful student going to Harvard that Cal Newport uh, may have interviewed, uh, they said that they do coursework every day. So they never take a day off, they do something. Maybe they don't do a lot, but they do something. Uh, those students there would also start big projects the day that they are assigned. So you get uh, an essay that you have to write, you start something that night. You don't have to have a full draft, maybe they just brainstorm an outline. Or if you have a big research project, um, they might use one of those assignment calculators and break those chunks down, but they at least take the first step as soon as they get started so they're not surprised you know, when time gets away from them. And of course, they take those big assignments and they break it down into smaller tasks. So if you had to write a short paper, instead of doing it all in one day, they would do it in three. Like I said, they might brainstorm an outline, then they would draft, and then they would spend the next night revising it, and then they would be able to turn in a good quality project. They had also set arbitrary deadlines. So these aren't uh, deadlines that your teacher sets. These are deadlines that they give themselves um, possibly to break up these big projects into smaller tasks or to take three days to write a short paper. And they would uh, make sure those deadlines, they would probably write them in a calendar most likely to make sure that they are getting all of those done. So that right there are a bunch of great study tips that will hopefully help help you. And this is a list of our sources, so you would want to click on just the Google Slides to review, and then you can click on these and, and go to them as well as any other ones that you saw throughout the presentation. I hope at this point, as a result of watching all three parts of organizing and prioritizing your studies, that you'll hopefully are becoming more aware of how you manage your time, that you're able to list some options for managing time and study tasks, if you don't remember what those are, check out uh, part two and list the best amount of time to study before taking a break. That was in part three. If you're not sure what that is, you may want to review that. Now, if you have any questions, please post to the discussion post in the academic uh, success uh, canvas course. Uh, find the module organizing and prioritizing your studies and you can ask questions there as well as share what works well for you. And when we do this workshop in person, students love hearing what other students do well and it gives them ideas and allows them to talk and share. Um, you don't have to take the survey since you're online, but you may want to take the quiz to, again, test your knowledge about what you've learned uh, as a result of watching these videos. Have a great day.